West Clock Style 8 Big Ben. Probably the most famous alarm clock West Clock ever released. The only clocks that West Clock released that would even become remotely close seconds and thirds would be the West Clock Style 5 Big Ben and the West Clock Style 1. Probably the probably it goes like this, the 8, the 1, and then the 5, because the 5 is really popular in its own right, but the 8 surpasses all of them. And for those of us who own Style 8s, you're probably thinking, you know, about the movement it has, which is I, if I grab a baby Ben over here, you're probably expecting it to look like this. This guy's from Alarming Antiques. There's no winding key, but you get the idea. It's the same type of movement. Fairly typical Style 8 movement. Not sure about this dial. Not sure how, how many of these were brown. I don't think many were. That'd be a clock worth servicing in its own series, but we're not talking about that today. Or you're going to think of a movement like this, which the Style 7 Big Bends have. This is the original movement, the single key 50 hour movement that West Clock had in their Big Bends. Both the Style 7 and the Style 8 had this until well, the Style 7 was around from 1956 to 1963. And then the Style 8 came in in 1964 and continued with this movement till 1969 or 1970, I believe. And what I used to believe for the longest time was that after 1970 or 1968, 69, Baby Ben, of course, was around and he always had this movement. I believe, or I should I say I used to believe, that the Big Bens got this movement right after this was done and now Big and Baby Ben were literally the same clock, except they were different sizes. That's what I used to think. Turns out that's not true. And we're going to find out in a minute here what exactly I'm talking about. And just so you can see what it looks like, viewers, here's a Style 7 Big Ben I'm working on. This guy's from 1963. And you can see that this is the movement that I was just talking about. It is a 50-hour uh, time and alarm movement it's a really great one to have it really is i really like this one and it's perfectly you know really nice to service and uh it, it works great inside of big ben i'm happy I'm, I'm not happy that the loud alarm movement went away necessarily here's the original big ben loud alarm movement also just service that i'm not happy that this went away but this was not a bad replacement by any means this was still really nice and even when Big Ben got Baby Ben's movement, it still wasn't, you know, that bad or anything like that. It was still a fine movement in there. Problem is, the alarm was way shorter, and it did not run 50 hours on one winding. So, enter this clock here. Now, this looks like your fairly typical style light. Let's see what color the dial is. I think it's brown. What do you know? We will get a better look at it when there's no lens on it. So, you're thinking, okay, Greg, are you servicing a style light today? Well, there's a plastic base on this one, so it's probably from 1960, oh, I don't know, 1968, probably onwards. I think that's when they introduced these. 1969, I don't know. It's kind of foggy when all these things started changing, but you look at that, and you think, what the heck is that? <laughs> there's no, this is no baby Ben right here. Let me just, I've got a baby Ben handy, actually. Uh, yes, we will be doing a series on this Fashion Bright Style 8, which was one of my most popular videos from back in the day. There's a video on this clock here, but it was not a service video. We will do a series on this guy. And you look at that and you think, well, that's not the same at all. And you look at the single key Big Ben movements, and uh, once again, this is a totally different key arrangement. Well, Greg, looks like your old thoughts of having just this movement and the other one, the single key movement... The single key, you know, style 7 movement in the style 8s looks like that was wrong. And yes, it was wrong. Because throughout, from what I believe to be 1968 through to 1970 or so, West Clock fought against the urge to give Big Ben the same movement that Baby Ben had. And I give him credit for it because, you know, times are getting tough in the late 60s. You got German imports all over the place. Digital clocks are slowly kind of coming on the scene, but they're not even that popular you just have a bunch of imports and it was a disaster so you know cost cutting was everywhere and they had to keep with the tradition of building two clock movements 
that were not the same thing. They had to keep Big Ben's movement belonging to Big Ben. Big Ben had to have a movement that was his and not Baby Ben's. And for a few years, they really tried hard to keep that up. And this is one of those examples. I'm not sure what Big Ben, what you'd even call this, the Style 8 Phase 2 or something. The style eight, uh, the style eight downgrade phase two or just phase one, sorry, because you know this is a step down from that single key movement that the style sevens had. I believe this is the first step down from that, and with this kind of step down process, they actually made a big Ben repeater out of I believe this movement here, or maybe it was baby Ben. Nah, no, I'm not even entirely sure. But anyway, they somehow pulled off. A repeating movement by adding a little extra gear train area thing you'd have to watch here one of these days pin palette 20 if he hasn't already will upload a video on one of these repeating big bends from the downgrading style 8 era these are still good movements from what i understand i've never serviced one this will be the first time i ever do uh so let's not break it shall we yes we're gonna go straight into this so here we go this is a style 8 I'm going to call it the Style 8 Downgrade Phase 1. This is the slow cost-cutting of West Clock. And yes, this is an American Style 8, so you American viewers would have this. I don't know if Canada even made these. It seems like the U.S. and kind of Scotland were the main participants in building these things. Uh, oh, and by the way, this was like 25 cents at a flea market, so that, that was an amazing price. My brother bought this for me. I didn't have a quarter handy, so, so he just got it. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So there's our base off. Let's take our winding key. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. That's a special key there. Wouldn't want to lose that. Usually they're not that long, the winding keys. They have a long protruding shaft on there. Let's get our screws out. As I said, viewers, this is my first one of these that I have. And it seems like, from what I've just messed around with it. Seems like it just needs a service. I don't think there's anything really wrong with this guy. He won't run, but that's not, you know, that's fine. Most clocks, they need a service, you know, they just stop running. Here's our bell, very rusty. Uh, the previous owner was apparently the seller's grandmother, so he apparently tried to get this thing to work. I don't know what the heck he did, if anything. He couldn't get it to work, so we're gonna see what the heck he did. I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be massacred somehow. But yeah, there's the bell, rusted out, no repair dates or anything like that in there, so we only know of the one guy. Oh, great, everybody's favorite little wire here. This is made of plastic, in case you didn't notice. Um, not sure how I feel about that, because most of these were not plastic. These were usually always metal. In fact, they switched back to, like, steel with Baby Ben. When they finally were done downgrading the Style 8, they were, like, they went to this, and under this bell here is a inner case like that, except it's made of steel. So they went back to that, so I guess that's a plus. Anyway, I'm giving you all the details so you don't miss a beat. Let's try and get this out of here. There you go, that's kind of how you get these wires out. A big flat-bladed screwdriver really helps prying or pushing these off. Okay, now we've got our movements out of the, well, more or less house. So, whoa, okay, there we go. Yes, this dial is brown. There's our bezel, there's our plastic lens, and I should really get over to the radium area so I can get all this stuff off and store it somewhere. Yes, viewers, this clock does have a radium dial, and I'm going to use dust protection here. I'm going to wear this mask when getting the hands off, just in case. You know, you never know with these things how stable the actual dial itself is. And we've got plastic gloves as well. Rubber gloves, or not rubber gloves, the plastic gloves, either way. Right, I'll take that wire piece out of there. There we go. We'll talk to you about that in a minute. And I believe, oh no, it's not gonna be an easy pull off, is it? <laughs> not today. We can just get our famous hand removal method. Take our piece of cardboard there with a kind of a triangle type thing, cutting it. And then just stick it in there. There we go. Hands all by itself. Get the card or get this plastic wrap on there. Take a big old screwdriver and just pop it right on off. 
and you don't scratch up the dial, you don't scratch up the hands, everything is gone hunky-dory here. And we're just going to put all this back because really the minute hand is the only one that really kind of fights with you. Uh, the hour hand might, oh no, hour and alarm hand came off at the same time because I kind of grabbed them both. Okay, that's good. And there's our Big Ben dial there. And not much going on back there. A little bit of rust. And here's the meat and potatoes right here. Check this movement out. Uh, what does this have? This has a date code on it. We'll look at it closer when we get inside. But yes, this is the first downgrade that West Clock did with their Style 8 Big Ben. And oh boy, am I not excited to get the knobs off. And the knobs being the time and alarm set knobs because those things are an infamous, infamously a pain in the neck. And hopefully we won't destroy the movement. All right, here we are. There's the meat and potatoes right in there. So we're gonna get it out. I know you're all very excited probably to look at this thing. I know I am. And we're gonna get a rubber, whatever the heck you wanna call this out of here. A rubber uh, mat, and of course it broke, because why wouldn't it? These things always do, so if, if yours gets broken, don't fret. Ooh, we might have to get... Okay, that's kind of hard. The holes are recessed, so I can't get in there with my pliers. That's a new one. I've never seen that before. Might have to get some kind of bit out here and try it that way. Okay, so after cobbling together something with a screwdriver from 1975, grabbing some kind of... I don't even entirely know what that is, to be totally honest with you and just sticking the 5.5 millimeter bit on here, we are able to just press down and just get this guy out of here, I think. Yeah, it's coming off. So make sure before you work on one of these that you have the right kind of bit for this, if that makes any sense, any, any type of uh, tool that would work. Because, uh, yeah, I just didn't even, almost didn't even have this. So. Anyway, that's okay. We cobbled it together out of something and made it work. And there we go. This is Greg's Imperial Adventure. And it's not coming out. Let's just get that out of there. Whoops, can't even do that. I got a pen. Of course, that's stuck in there now. Why wouldn't it be? There we go. There we go. Now we have all that stuff there we can use for in the future for this exact task again. And I'm surprised we had anything that would work there at all. Okay, let's get this out of here. And this, oh, there's more bits lying around. <laughs> bits everywhere. This is fairly cheap. I'm kind of disappointed that West Clock went with plastic here, but hey, I guess it's just the inner case. It's not the end of the world. Okay, here is our meat and potatoes right here. And let's just compare this with a... Well, I'm not going to grab my Style 7 one. I'll grab one here that is nickel-plated. Here, I'll just do it. Here we go. Let's compare it with the original movement that this would have had. And you can already tell which one's a higher budget, and of course there's another one over there, which it's, it's not nickel plated. This movement here is from 1960 when? Let's see here, 1968 or 69. Uh, it says on here somewhere. There we go, 60. Uh, I can just see, oh, it's, oh, that guy's from 66. Okay, so that's a little bit of an earlier one. And our poor movement here, This what, what goes wrong with these guys usually, I parted out the balance wheel, by the way, uh, for that movement over there, because this that movement there had dull pivots, and I don't have any pivot polishing stuff yet. So I just grabbed the wheel out of this. What happens to these poor movements is, what happens is this poor wheel right there takes all the power. There's our, there's our mainspring, there's our center wheel, and there's that wheel there. And that little pinion there, I think that's not even a lantern pinion, I don't know what type of pinion that is, is taking all the power from the center wheel. And as you can see, it'll collapse in on itself sometimes. This, the center, the spring tension after a while will be too much and it'll just kind of collapse in. And then this will just be free to do whatever the heck it wants. Not a good design there. I'm, I don't like that, that it's designed that way. But 
otherwise it's a great movement that's that's my one kind of gripe about those and even with that that whole collapsation type thing doesn't even happen very often you know i mean that guy over there is still running fine with that same exact thing going on so and i'm sure you could probably fix that wheel or replace it somehow but i'm not going to do that right now i don't even know why i went on that tangent to be really honest with you let's get back let's get on topic here shall we let's compare our movements here so yes they're both squares and they're almost the reverse of each other the balance wheel goes here the balance wheel goes here usually it should be on this side but yeah they totally just flip the whole thing around let's kind of look at this on the back we've still got a removable spring barrel guys i can't believe they still have that in what is this 1970 when wow look at those spacers there uh what you what year is this thing i don't even know because it's not saying Oh, this movement is lighter, I know that much. And there's our alarm hammer. It just says 1211. So that could be December 11th, but I don't know what year. It doesn't say. It have to be 1968, 69, 70, something like that. It's in there somewhere. My timeline of when they change this stuff around is still work in progress, viewers. All I know is that this stuff happened and not entirely sure when. So we had dropped this. This is clearly inspired off of this. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, this uses some of Baby Ben's parts. This escapement here is, is Baby Ben's. All that there is the same as it is in a Baby Ben. Whoops, as I drop it. So that, that's all belonging to Baby Ben. Those wheels there. I think that first wheel belongs to Baby Ben. The second wheel doesn't. Uh, let's see. Oh, we've got the same design happening again. Look at that. We've got the center wheel coming right off into the into a pinion like that. <laughs> Obviously, West Clock thought that design was okay. Very interesting how they just kept that on there. And then we've got our alarm stuff. Where's our what's here? What is this? this is our hammer? I don't know where our oh there's our there's our stop works right there. And you have the stop works timing wheel here. Uh, this would be more or less the same on a baby Ben. I'm pretty sure later this wheel would get smaller, but yeah, the stop works would be a constant after this movement here. What is a stop works? Well, it, it lets the alarm ring for a determined amount of time. And when the alarm is done, the stop works will keep the mainspring from being wound down entirely because this is, this is a one spring clock. And same with the other one that came before it. So the stop works, you know, you've got your alarm, it runs for a certain amount of time, stops, and then the spring just continues running the clock and doesn't let the mainspring run all the way down. Because it is, if there's no stop works, the mainspring is just going to run all the way down, ringing, if that makes any sense. Okay, let's leave that for now. And let's get our stuff apart here. So... This is plastic. That's already kind of dumb. I don't like that. Oh, that just comes off. Okay. Um, I guess that just sits, sits on like that. Interesting. There's a regulator uh, screw adjustment lever thing, whatever you want to call that. And that just pops off. Hope that doesn't break on me one of these days. That looks like it would. Yeah, this is clearly a cost-reduced version of the original movement, which is kind of sad to say the least, but it's kind of a cool little movement, actually. It looks very kind of, it looks very industrial looking, doesn't it? Very, very industrial. And I believe on this, our mainspring is wound all the way down, but if it's not, you can try and kind of jimmy the plates out like this here and try and get your escape wheel out of that. That's a very dangerous procedure though, viewers. I mean, it's just kind of if, if I was, here's, here's the most optimal way of doing this. Get some crap oil and just oil all the pivots on this thing. Oil whatever you have to just to get the thing to run down. And then when it's unwound like this, then you can take it apart. If you can. I don't know. If you can't, uh, comment and I'll try and help you out. Because this, this can be very annoying. There's no real way to let the mainspring down except for letting it run down. And that's kind of the sucky part about this movement here as well. There's no mainspring click that you can let down. Not that I know of anyway. Oh, yes. Anyway, this guy is somewhat repairable. Whoops. 
Oh yeah, and by the way, we're we're still here. We don't know what our what our our buyer friend did. Remember the guy who I bought this from? He said it belonged to his mom or belonged to his grandmother, and he couldn't get it to work. Look at this. I don't think he did anything with the movement. Hairspring looks fine. So I don't know what's going on here. He didn't mess anything up, looks like. I don't know. I don't know what he was doing. Maybe he couldn't even get the thing open. I don't know. He couldn't. He, he Obviously, I don't think he knew how this stuff really worked. Okay, there's our, there's our main spring barrel screws. Make sure to have a parts cup nearby you guys as well. And take plenty of pictures and video to see how you did this. Okay, there's our plate. This should just pop right on off. Yeah, there we go. This is designed the same exact way as it is on the previous movement. So yeah, this is a downgrade, but not, still not terrible. Let's kind of get this guy, uh oh, uh oh, it's kind of coming apart in my hands here. Whoa, 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 okay, guess we're going that route. Uh, yeah, that's why you wear gloves. And here's our spring barrel. Interesting, interesting design there. There's a bunch of stamped holes in it. It does not come apart in the typical sense. Don't worry, I will show you how to get one of these apart. And you know what? Uh, I thought that this spring barrel, maybe it, maybe it still is, I don't know. I thought this kind of hole punch design, when this movement was on its way out here, I thought they changed, I thought this spring barrel belonged to this movement. But maybe not. Maybe they always kept the spokes on these guys. I don't know. Maybe they didn't stamp them out in the later years. I have no idea. All I know is that these movements here usually have spoked uh spring barrels on there but anyway back to this this does not have that okay now we are apart partially and i'm thinking oh you, you nice view of everything in here actually this is a fairly bare movement there's not much going on in here uh does this come off how does this work okay that just we don't have to worry about that this is like a this is like a baby ven version of this <laughs> I'm almost wondering if Baby Ben should have had this movement. That is funny. That it's, it's literally a miniaturized version of our other movement that we had. I was not expecting that. Okay. Uh, let's try and get our knobs off here now. So what we can do is get our... I'm just going to get a parts container here to kind of prop this up on. I really just grabbed a roll of Teflon tape and just stuck this on top there. And what I'm going to do, I think, is just take our, uh, where are they at, cutting pliers here, and just kind of get them under here. Yeah, that's the way to do it, I think. Get them under there and pop the knob off, because there's clearly a space under there for that. So I can just kind of get in here, and then take our, and yes, the knobs have to kind of come off. Uh, let's try and just pull it up. Oh, uh, shoot. Hmm. Okay, I think there's... Yeah, we can still stick our screwdriver in there. And get it up in one way or another. And I'm scratching up the plate here. I'm scratching up this thing. Hmm. Hard to know what to do sometimes. Yours... Actually, maybe it would be a better idea to take this whole thing off. This whole front piece. Yeah. I'm thinking that might be a wise idea. What the heck happened to our hairspring? I hope I didn't, like, clip it. Hmm. Okay. Wasn't really looking at it that close, to be totally honest with you. Yeah, I think we're going to actually just change gears for a second. Just go over here and deal with this. And you can see kind of in there, there's tabs to bend. And yeah, we can just take it off just like that. Kind of line up the tabs with the bend. Whoops. There we are. We can now take this off. Whoops. And that is the front of our movements. Interesting. Very interesting how this all 
comes together here. And you can see plenty of inspiration here for our later Style 8 Baby Ben movement. There's plenty of parts here that are the same. And to be totally honest with you, I'm not really all that surprised that that would be like that. Okay, let's get back to this. I'm going to take our, oops, I'm just gonna take that, move, I'm just gonna relocate some stuff here. If you don't already get your, we're gonna abandon the Teflon tape here because I don't think that's gonna help us much. We have got some blocks of wood here and we're just gonna angle it in there like that. And go that route. Okay. I'm gonna get a pair of lineman's pliers in there. And then get a pair of these guys in there. And then get our screwdriver in there and just make sure that it's under the kind of the gap there in between our pliers and you can't even see what I am doing. I hate this phone camera sometimes, goodness gracious. Okay, let's try this. I'm trying to angle it up off of the off of here. Whoops. Uh, actually, let's look at this for a second. Do I need to take all this off? Uh, actually, this wheel here, might, this knob here might actually be able to stay on. The reason why we remove knobs here is it's usually on the other end of the knob is some kind of gear or whatever that will not come off. So the knob has to come off. And I'm just looking here. Does this have to... Is there something blocking the top plate? Doesn't look like it. This might be able to stay on. Okay, well, at least let's get this off either way. Let's get that off. I'm just marveling how lightweight this movement is. They don't even, they didn't even uh, use the heavy material for it, heavy sort of brass or whatever. I think this movement's made of steel or something like that. Nickel plated brass, maybe. There we are. Oh. Oh, I'm trying also, while you're at it, don't bend the plates inwards, although it seems like that'll be a fairly easy task for this particular movement. Yeah, I'm just grabbing pliers and just stacking up on top of each other. Try not to crush pivots, hey? Because if you put a plier up on top of a pivot and, you know, crush it like that, that's not going to be a good idea. That is going to ruin the clock, or ruin the pivot arbor. And why won't you come off? Oh. Hey, hope it didn't snap it off. Uh, no, that was a loud pop that happened there. And yes, we are off now, I think, yep. And there it is. There's our alarm. And that's that. And what else have we got? to take off i don't think this guy can stay on here as well because there's nothing blocking the front here so that can just stay there this uh i you know what if i don't have to take it off i won't this is getting a little too close to the escapement i don't want to bend the plate down and have the escapement get crushed somehow and then you're in for a real mess because you gotta replace stuff or bend it back it's a disaster yeah i'm just gonna leave that on if i can that's just gonna stay on like that. And let's get our camera just a little bit more in there. Goodness gracious, phone. See, the problem is when it's back like this, everything is now more out of focus. I don't know if it's just, like this is the iPhone 13 here I'm using, or iPhone, yeah, iPhone 13, I think so. And the camera is just out to the lunch, like seriously. Oh my goodness. It seems there's like two settings for a camera to be clear at. Oh yeah, yeah, that's not even relevant. Okay, let's get our escapement out of here, and let's just actually—I can take my gloves off now. And actually, you know what, viewers? I should stop the video here. It's probably gone on long enough. Oops. There we go. Yes, it has probably gone on long enough, viewers. You've seen enough for now. I will continue in the next part.